For most people, this is what Facebook ads look like. Do you know what this is? This is what I call the hope and pray method where they spend money on Facebook and they're hoping and praying, please, please let my campaigns and my ad sets and my ads be profitable. And if it's not a favorable outcome, they have no idea what to do. And today in this video, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes to a Facebook tutorial to show you exactly what is required to scale utilizing CBO, Campaign Budget Optimizer. Uh, we're gonna be talking about scaling and bidding strategies. I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes to a multi-million dollar ad account to show you exactly what it is that you need to be doing as well. And if you stay till the end of this video, you're gonna be seeing exactly what it takes to scale the mistakes that I made so that you don't have to make the mistakes um, in this behind the scenes coaching call. Be sure to watch this video right till the end because it's gonna be one of the most profitable moves that you'll ever make when it comes to running Facebook ads. Let's begin. My friend, thank you so much for what you're teaching. Um, I just want to understand because I have been doing the, the, when I am targeting different countries uh, or I just have that difference, I usually have done it or have learned it doing it from the ad set level instead from the campaign level. And I, I mean, I just want to, to fix it. I'm doing it wrong. I want to fix that. If you understand that now I should change that to the campaign level instead of from the ad set level. Um, just to clarify Jorge's question so that everybody is aligned, let me just go ahead and swap over to my screen again. So basically what Jorge wants to know is basically from a, so right now we're at a campaign level, right? There are three levels. For those of you who are really new to this, there's campaign, ad sets, and ads, okay? So how is it usually set up? What is the difference between campaign, ad sets, and ads? Remember, what have I said in the past? I said the path to scaling is all math. You need to really remember that when it comes to scaling. So I know that even though on the front end, straight away I make $55 back, over the long run, if I'm targeting a super cold audience in the US for this $7 offer, I have to pay $129 to acquire a customer, which I'm still happy to do so. Why? Because I know my numbers and I know that over a lifetime value, they're worth more than that. Now, what is super group? So if I were to click on ad sets, which is basically um, Jorge's question. So notice that inside this campaign, okay? Now, the, it's still learning, by the way, as you can see, it's still learning. And by the way, right? That's why I'm still willing to spend money on this campaign. Why? Because the pixel is telling me that they haven't learned, finished learning yet. The, the pixel is still maturing. Now notice that in this ad set, I have got three different sets. I have cold, which is based upon interest. I have cold, that's based upon lookalike, people that look like a specific audience, usually leads or buyers but they still don't know me, and that's why they're cold. And I have a warm slash hot audience. Why do I do this? It is because I think the last time we talked about traffic, maybe it's been about, I don't know, two months, three months. But if you remember one of the, 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 the sessions where I talked about the targeting a super cold audience and thinking about how in an ad set, you kind of want to have like a senior training a junior in the company when it comes to performance. I think that was the analogy that I gave then. Um, how many of you here, that, that kind of rings a bell. So under the ad set level, there's three main types of audiences. Now, what are the three audiences? This would be cold based on interest. So people who like I don't know, specific books, organizations. This could be cold based upon lookalike. And the third one that was over here was basically uh, warm or hot audiences, which is basically people that has perhaps bought from me in the past. What does CBO say? What is, what is the whole definition of campaign budget optimization? It is basically telling Facebook, hey Facebook, you now have free will to allocate this $120 because this is the ad set that's under the campaign, right? And it is up to you to spend how, however you feel is going to serve this campaign best 
that is going to help us acquire buyers at the lowest possible cost. So, what's going to happen? Okay. Now, in theory, out of these three audiences, cold audiences that's based on interest, cold audiences that's based upon lookalike, and hot audience, which is basically people that has bought from me in the past for other products, just based on this alone, Facebook initially will see that this audience is outperforming the other audiences. So usually what will happen is Facebook will start spending saying whatever, will start spending initially, they have no idea, right? So maybe on a day one, just this, just in theory, right? On day one, for simplicity purposes, doesn't necessarily work like this, but on day one, if they allocate $40 on each of this, probably halfway through, what do you think is going to happen before they even hit $40? They're going to say, oh, wait a second, somehow, for some weird reason, this audience is outperforming this interest audience group, is out somehow outperforming this lookalike audience. So before the day even ends, they'll be like, you know what, screw this. We're just allocating $20 right now. We're cutting your budget, okay? And now we're cutting you to $20 and we are increasing you to $80, right? Why? Because this audience seems to be out-converting this audience. And maybe this is the end of day one. End of day one, you spend $20 here, $20 and $80 here. Okay, we'll back it up with actual numbers later on. Okay, it could be slightly different, but usually it's something like this. So what's gonna happen on day two? Day two, Facebook is saying, uh, so this is day one, right? So day two, what is Facebook saying? Facebook is saying, hey, you know what? We are smart. We learn through AI. Therefore, because we have numbers and statistics on day one you know what we are smart now and now we want to allocate more money and give this priority okay so what do they do now perhaps on day two they spend a hundred dollars here and then they spend ten dollars here and ten dollars here right still meeting this hundred twenty dollars now what's gonna happen on day three same thing here they're gonna say what we're ai we're smart we're machine learning we're learning through all these things and 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 you know what they're saying it, this is converting so much better than all these others. So let's start off with allocating all $120 on this. Okay, now perhaps, now this could be day three, this could be day seven, this could be day 15. But you'll reach somewhere down the road where this starts to fatigue out. Where Facebook is trying to target these hot audiences, but these audiences it's the same audience that's seeing the same ad again and again. And now, somehow, again, this could be day three, day seven, or day 72, right? But somewhere down the road, Facebook is gonna see that this thing has fatigued out, and they're saying, oh, wait a second, it wasn't as effective as it used to be. Now, what's gonna happen when that happens? Now, initially, if you're just starting out and you might not have a buyers or leads, list yet or hot audience, that's okay, right? Remember, that's why this is built over time. And that's why if you're constantly rolling it forward, that's why initially, remember your mindset, and this goes for all of you, is that initially, what are you doing? You are paying for data. You're paying for data because you're building up warm, hot, and cold audiences. And it's okay initially when it's more expensive than usual, because that is how the Facebook pixel learns over time it could be the per the person purchased something through me it could be because they bought traffic secrets through me okay it could be because they um are in my targeting could be for click funnels dan lock russell brunson it could be because they engaged my page engaged my instagram right how many of you here appreciate the fact that when i teach you this you are literally seeing the numbers that back it up so you know that you're not learning theory, right? Okay, thank you. And hopefully you're able to see that this funnel, we're spending like $2,000 a day, a day, right? Um, just to do this. Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes to this coaching call. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. And as always, be sure to smash the like button. It does help the channel out a little bit and to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of future videos just like this one. Now, some of you asking me, how can I be part of this process? How can I ask you questions? How can I have you coach me or mentor me? 
Um, we want to make sure that we are working with the people that's the right fit. You'll need to fill up a form. There's a link right below this video. Somebody on my team might give you a call to interview you to see if they're right fit for each other. And if you want to apply and see if you're a good fit, then all you need to do is click on this link in the description box below and my team will be in touch with you.